I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life in Leon, Nicaragua. I've had a lot of people talking recently, and you all have. This is one of those big things that is being pushed all over the internet. You're starting to hear this idea of getting a plan B and doing so by planting your flag around the world. Well, that's something that really requires a little bit of explanation and discussion because I think people are getting a lot of misinformation by people who are trying to sell services to help them plant their flag around the world. So is it something you need? What does it actually mean? And would it actually be good for you for the reasons you think? Let's get to that on this beautiful day on a beautiful walk right after that bump. We started the day here in Leon, Nicaragua with a pretty sizable rainstorm. I mean, it was pouring something crazy. And this entire last fortnight has really been like that. Managua got completely flooded yesterday and uh, it's just gorgeous out here. I don't know if you can see the volcanoes, but the air is so clear because of all the rain we've been having that we're just getting amazing views all over the place uh, because we can see so much farther, the air is so clear. Often we have a lot of dust because dust comes in from Africa around here. And uh, you can sort of see, we just have, we just have great views. It's beautiful, which, with the cooling air. Ooh, there, we can really see. Off in the distance. It's one of the things I love about living in Nicaragua. I go for a walk and I'm looking at volcanoes all over the place. My father was watching the live stream the other night and he said, wow, they showed that picture of the volcano of San Cristobal behind uh, what is now where my one of my houses is. And uh, my dad's like, I really didn't picture you looking at a volcano like that. That's pretty incredible. Like it's, it's quite some distance away, but it's so big. Anyway, so today's topic, there's been so much talk. This is, this is the, the big new thing, right? Everyone who wants to sell a very easy and impossible to verify uh, internet scheme is talking about one of two major things. We're gonna talk about one on a future episode, and that is passport portfolios. But today we're gonna to talk about planting your flag. So the idea behind this is pretty basic, right? They start with some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That's how sales almost always does happen, right? You start with, well, the North American economies, like the US and Canada, Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, they're all falling apart. There's, you know, the dollar's gonna suddenly disappear and like they'll come up with all these weird things that don't really make any sense. I mean, trust me, being an American, you look at the United States, you hear the news out of Canada, it's easy to picture widespread mayhem and total disaster and total collapse. It's not that much out of the realm of possibility. It's easy to imagine it, imagine it at the very least. So. That part kind of makes sense. With some of these things like the collapse of the dollar, you get people who are swearing it's already happened. But if you look, nothing, nothing of the sort is happening at all. There's no reason to be concerned. People are saying, oh, well, the dollar's not being used for something. It's like, okay, like, how does that actually affect the dollar? Like, people don't understand currency, so it's an easy place to talk about things and get people riled up. Talk about gold, talk about crypto. Start throwing around concepts that everyone has enough of an idea of we all know what a metal is. We all know what a dollar is. We all know basically what cryptocurrency is, but none of us tend to know enough to have really good educated conversations about them. We're not 100% sure how currencies work and how they relate to each other. We definitely don't know how cryptocurrencies work specifically. And gold, well, that's been kind of presented as magic for a really long time when it's just another commodity. So a lot of these things, when you hear people talking about it, anytime you hear someone that's talking about that, you should start hearing alarm bells. Well, you gotta watch out that this person isn't a salesman because these are things that people tend to talk about when they're setting me up to sell something. They wanna make me start to panic about things I don't quite understand. Things that seem like maybe something's going wrong. And then what do I do? I don't know. And then they'll have a solution for me. It can be subtle, it can be, cause some fear over time and eventually you go well what are you going to do and then surprise surprise they have something to sell you or maybe maybe it's really obvious hola <laughs> gracias 
<laughs> some people way down a path who heard me talking and turned around and waved. I think I'm in, uh, I may actually be in front of Mario's house. I'm never sure where his driveway is, but I think that was his driveway. I think that was his driver in his driveway waving to me. Uh, so Mario, I know you're watching this. I'm in front of your house. So it's a really easy setup, right? Get people to start to panic. And then once people are starting to panic, once they don't have answers themselves, then it's super simple to start selling them something. And what's really easy to sell to people? Well, things like relocation services. Why, why is that simple? Well, because people who are looking for relocation services have no basis for evaluating them. Like I could sell you relocation services. Hey guys, I can help you move to any country in the world, pay me a huge amount of money, and I'm gonna take care of all kinds of things for you. Right, I can say that. Well, those who watch my show every day, you know where I'm somewhat skilled and where I'm not, but for most of you, you'd be like, well, maybe he can help me move to South Korea. How would I know? He's as likely to be able to do so as anyone else, and he's got a YouTube channel. Well, why not trust him, right? He's created some fear, uncertainty, and doubt about things. Maybe he'll, he's got things worked out, right? He's got a, he looks good on YouTube. I mean, I look good on YouTube, right? So it's easy to present an air of success and to pretend that I had this fear, uncertainty, and doubt and get you to say, well, that guy, he's got it figured out. Maybe he can figure it out for me. And you don't, the, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, that's unfounded. Like, sure, there's great reasons to look at relocation. Trust me, I relocated. I'm not gonna say you shouldn't relocate. You shouldn't do so out of fear. You should do so out of finding your paradise, finding your happy, making your life better. That is the re, you, if, if you're doing it for another reason, you're way too late. You, I mean, still go do it, but you should have moved a long time ago. That's, you should never be waiting until you're worried about the place you're in. You should be heading to the place that's right for you from the get go. But, so that first piece, I never had that fear. I never had that uncertainty. I just, didn't prefer where I was. And the second piece, do I have everything figured out? No, I look like I do. I'm better than most, but I certainly don't have everything figured out. I can't give you all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I give you as many answers as I can. I have more answers than the average bear, but you know, the average bear doesn't have a lot of answers. It's easy to look good when the bar is really low, right? So you look for someone like me for relocation assistance, and you start waving money around. Now, I, I understand you're not offering them money. They're asking for money, right? But the idea is there's lots of money to be made. And quite often, people who are relocating are often doing so out of panic or out of financial distress. So you'll often find people who are just willing to do a little bit of something to make some money. And anybody is you know, tempted by money when it's offered to them, especially for easy work. And the thing about relocation services or anything of the sort is that it's essentially impossible to really prove if it's good or not. How do you know whether I did a good job or it was just really easy? How do you know if I did a bad job or there was just a lot of challenges that I had no way to predict? Sometimes people run into impossible situations and nobody could have helped them. Some people have an easy time and nothing was needed. Like you can't evaluate because you only ever do it once. So you're really left with, for a million reasons, no way to evaluate whether I'm a good resource for you. You can evaluate someone as definitely being a bad resource, but knowing when someone is actually a good resource, all but impossible, would take an extreme amount of work and honestly, it would be easier to relocate to most places than to find someone who's a good relocation service. But because of that, there's no way for someone to be seen as being super bad, right? So it's a really easy thing when there's no way to have a tangible result, right? Because I can be like, oh, I'm the best relocation person ever. Really, how many people did you help move? Well, first of all, it doesn't matter how many I did, right? It's how many tried and failed, how hard were they, what problems did they have, and so forth, and where were they going? And there's just a million factors that are far more important than anything I'm doing. And uh, I can just make it up. I helped 10,000. 10,000 successful customers. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. You should, you should hire me, right? I have no way to prove 10,000 people. I can just say that. 
right? I can say I did it in countries all over the world. I can say that I did it all in one. Like I can just say anything. How are you ever going to verify that, right? And this is what services look like. And so I don't have to produce anything for any of my previous clients, uh, if I even had one, right? Like I don't have to prove that I did anything. And for someone who's now going to use my service, what is my service? Even really big, well-known services for this kind of stuff, right? Go look at like even Nomad Capitalist, right? And watch his sales pitch and you're like, I don't even know what you're selling, dude. Like I'm sure he's very good and professional. He's been around, he's got a million followers, literally. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he's not good at what he does. I'm not saying that he doesn't offer a good service. I'm saying that when I look at it, I don't even know what his service is, right? That's how unclear it is. That's how little you have to put in to, uh, to being a service of that nature is that you don't even have to define what you do. Sorry, I had a bunch of people screaming there because someone was going by on a bicycle. You don't even have to define what it is you offer to someone and people are likely to give you thousands or possibly tens of thousands of dollars based on they're just so nervous about relocating but feel they have to because they're scared of where they are that they will just fall for anything. I'm not saying he's making people fall for things. I'm saying that he's proven he doesn't even have to go through the effort of having a defined product. He just goes, I've relocated and you should pay me. And that's enough. And people are just throwing money at him, right? So there's a ton of people. We'll, we'll assume he's legit, he probably is. And, but anybody can look at him and say, wow, that dude looks like he's making bank and all he's doing is sitting in an office that could be anywhere, saying he's lots of cool places, and charging an arm and a leg for something he doesn't even say what he's going to do. You just give him money and hope for the best. Like, give me money and your life will get better. And people just do that, right? So anybody could do that. So people do. They look at this model and they go, well, I'm just going to do that. So what's the easiest thing to do? Well, you start coming up with these concepts, like you need to plant your flag. That was a lot of intro to get to, you gotta plant your flag, but this is important. So we are starting from, this is, there's a whole world of scamming people around this that's going on for really logical reasons. It's the perfect time, North America is falling apart. I mean, that is definitely true. People are panicking even without people riling them up. That's definitely true. Life in, North America has gotten really hard, very expensive. People are afraid for their freedoms, afraid for their safety. Uh, mass shootings are on the rise, not on the decline. Uh, overall safety in the US has gotten better, but that's a fluke, not, not like a long-term thing that's likely to, to keep happening. They have some ideas of why it's happened and it's definitely not stuff that, something that they can maintain long-term. But, so there's reasons that people are reaching out and making an effort. What do I need to do to get out? What do I gotta do to protect myself? Well, if you're someone who's in a position and willing to kind of questionably take people's money, you will just say, oh, you need to plant your flag all over and I can help you do that. And, and they'll just throw money at you. They don't need to know what planting a flag is. You don't need to know what planting a flag is. It's just a really good sound bite, right? Oh, that sounds great. If I plant a flag, that must give me something. That's why, and so everybody's repeating this same scam phrase. So what is the idea behind it? The false idea behind the plant your flag movement is that somehow you're gonna go out and through a series of not traveling and not moving abroad, you're going to put in a bunch of money generally to a service who is going to plant your flag for you and you're going to generally what they do is they sell residency but it could be citizenship it could be any number of things and they're going to get you some kind of presence in a country that when the world falls apart oh you're guaranteed that that country will take you you have a place to go you're you're all set you have paperwork there's a bunch of problems with this one is that a lot of those countries don't, don't even have those systems. So a lot of people are being sold that on Nicaragua. Well, I'm just gonna go get residency there. Well, you have to be here most of the time to have residency. Now, you don't need residency to live here. We talk about that a ton. But if the thing you're trying to get is residency, first of all, residency is not a universal, right? The word residency doesn't mean the same thing in Nicaragua that it does in Mexico, for example. Every country defines residency differently. 
the United States, completely different than Nicaragua or Mexico, right? Residency is an internal, non-universal term used by countries, sometimes, not even always, for things that happen inside their country. Oh, oh, we got... <laughs> there was a throwback for my my old audience from 2022 i just walked by and they all screamed hey is again the on facebook i said no no it's on youtube it's a scott allen miller vlog and someone screamed one dollar <laughs> Watch the old episodes to learn about that. Okay, so, uh, like, for example, uh, one country does not request residency information from another country. Those are internal things. It's, it's, and it's meaningless, right? If Canada said to Nicaragua, is this person a resident? Nicaragua would say, you know, on what context? To you? To me? To, like, Nicaragua has lots of different residencies that mean different things. Like, it's just, it's a meaningless thing. It, if people are trying to sell you, on a bunch of residency across multiple countries, fundamentally that's a scam. Because you would have to have a unique situation in each country. It'd have, it would have a different meaning, a different purpose. It just, it doesn't make sense in that way. So it's conceptually just a bunch of BS, not a great situation. So that is a good starting point. So if you're, if you're gonna have residency in Nicaragua and a lot of people are being told that it's a good one, and it is, it's a great place to be resident, but to be resident in Nicaragua, you must be actually resident here. You have to be here physically. Now, you can stay here, not most of the time, no problem. It's just you're not called a resident here, but being called a resident here gets you literally nothing, nothing at all. So when these people are saying, oh, we're gonna plant a flag, well, let's talk about it. No, of course, every country's different, right? Mexico has a really interesting residency program that's super expensive, where you never have to visit Mexico and you can get this residency option and you never have to go. And you just pay a bunch of money to have a meaningless piece of paper that says, yeah, if nothing changes, you can go stay. And that's great. But if you need to action a plan B and there's like a big emergency, well, that, then things change and that paper's worthless. So the idea of planting your flag in Mexico is a big joke, right? It doesn't work under the situations where you would need it. And if, so there's basically two situations where you need to enact a plan B. And I don't recommend having a plan B, I recommend having a proper plan A. That's one of the problems is that the people selling the plan B mentality are selling do a impossible to prove plan B instead of having a proper plan A because having a proper plan A is easy to prove that you got it right or wrong it's easy to tell if you're happy or not with it but your plan B you don't put into action not completely and so you never know if your plan B will work because you have no way to test it and that's a big deal. I come from an IT background, so we talk about like backups. Backups that you can't restore, those aren't backups. Your plan B, if you can't go live in the country you hope to, that you've set up in your plan B, when your plan A falls apart, well guess what, that wasn't actually a plan B. That's not a backup. You were just sold smoke and mirrors. And that's the problem. So, two main scenarios. We'll just say you're American and you're going to move to Mexico as your plan B and you went ahead and you paid someone and you planted your flag. You've got your residency. Woo! You are all set. You're protected. Wait a minute. How are you protected? In what imaginary world do you have anything? Because if your life has fallen apart and you have to go to Mexico, well, guess what? You're going to be reevaluated for that paperwork. Did you lose all your financial resources? Are you wanted by the U.S. military, by the U.S. police, by whatever? Well, Mexico is going to reconsider that residency. And if you had the resources to keep them from reconsidering it, well, then you didn't need it. Because if you're able to keep your residency, you are able to get it again. Big surprise. People forget. No residency is permanent. None. 
permanent res truly permanent residency is citizenship and no one who calls it permanent residency makes it permanent it's always at the will of the country and there's no international pressure there is no laws no anything that makes them honor a residency requirement a residency uh paper they always at their discretion at their whim at their pleasure so if you're in a position where you personally nothing the united states hasn't fallen apart you just decide that for you and your family you got to get out and you got to action your personal you got to action your personal plan b no problem if you had it all set up ahead of time and you're still in a good position then that's fine but it didn't help you it didn't hurt you it didn't help you if you find out that your situation has deteriorated and they're going to reevaluate your your residency well guess what having wasted those resources earlier put you in a weaker position you're now less likely to be able to have not very much likely but a little bit less likely to be able to maintain your residency in mexico because you had it when it was useless because you wasted money on it and it will show that you went and got it and didn't live there that's not going to count towards you either right so you're doing things that don't look good and don't and str don't strengthen your financial position you're just making yourself look like a bad candidate with less money it also makes you look like a crazy person so that doesn't help you you got three strikes against you by having done the plan b with mexico now if you were personally acting this and everything was fine and you show up in mexico now we got a bus we definitely are not going to talk over this you're actioning your personal plan b you've done no prep you show up in mexico well guess what mexico's as long as you're a good candidate good enough to even remotely consider getting residency you're coming into mexico no problem then you have a bunch of time to work on your residency once you're there so you're in just as good or better position with mexico if you didn't do that plan b preparation that's how much of a scam it is mexico is one of the best places for planting your flag and that's real because they let you kind of do it but unless you're doing something else unless you're using that residency either to really live there and be a good resident or investing in the country buying a house doing something that shows that you're really tied to it and really committed to it you've accomplished nothing you've just wasted your resources it's completely just a scam now nicaragua has tried the same thing you want to come to nicaragua you don't want to live here now but you want to be prepared for the future this is completely crazy because this doesn't exist at all this is a hundred percent myth this isn't just scamming you on the final result this is scamming you on the entire process so say well i'm gonna go get residency I'm like okay so all the things that people tell me they want residency for in nicaragua none of those things come from residency so the whole basis like oh i want to be able to buy a house nope that doesn't come with residency i want to be able to invest nope doesn't come with residency i want to be able to stay indefinitely nope doesn't come with residency clearly doing zero research and the people selling this to you are really really not even bothering to hide that they're scamming like it's just such an open scam it's so bad what will then happen is you'll end up spending a bunch of money right because if you're falling for the scam you're going to fall for a bit of it they know they're going to line up fake lawyers or kind of you know fake-ish lawyers they're going to find ways to make things seem expensive you're not there doing your homework clearly they know because you're going for a residency that isn't even real not the what the thing you're picturing doesn't exist so they know you're not doing any research right so they're going to charge you hundreds of dollars for paperwork that's free they're going to forge things because it makes the process easier for them to make money they're going to never bother getting you any residency because why bother right you're not checking anything and if you did check something you would know that the moment you got that residency you have to be living in the country you have to do an interview in spanish you have to convince them that you want to live here and have been living here that's not very hard if that's really what you want to do but if you have no plans of living here if you're not making an effort to actually be living here it's going to be a little bit obvious and when you then leave the country and are like oh i'll come back should i need to action my plan b 
they pretty much cancel your residency right then and there. And if they know you're leaving. If they don't, then it'll get canceled after several months. But it doesn't really matter. One way or another, you're going to have your residency evaporate before you could action it as a plan B. So it's not a plan B. It doesn't exist at all in that context. You can't have it in the ready. But you also don't need it in the ready. If you were in a position to maintain your residency, and something that people forget, you have to renew your residency annually here in Nicaragua. And you have to renew your cedula every six months. So you're required to not only be in Nicaragua more than six months of the year under the current regime, you have to be here at specific twice a year, six month intervals. And for normal residencies, you have to renew every year. And that renewal, while not hard, does Im imply you have to re -be, be evaluated again that you're still a good candidate like you were when you initially came. If you are a normal person, you're, unless you're not you know, committing crimes or something, you're in great shape, right? Because you should probably have all the resources you did the first time you applied, plus a track record of being in the country. Like it's all gonna count in your favor, not a problem. But if you're trying to scam the system and you're trying to make it a plan B, well, it, they don't allow plan Bs here. So you're gonna find out that all of that was for naught and it's gonna be revoked. They're not mad at you. You just, why did you pay to do that for something you weren't going to use? Now it's gone, All right? It's a very silly situation to have gotten yourself into, but these plan Bers depend on people not doing their homework, having no idea how residencies work around the world, having no idea what it would mean should the world fall apart and so forth. But Nicaragua, there's no reason to have gotten a plan B here because a person with residency and a person without residency are allowed into the country exactly the same. Now, people are going to say, oh, but things could change. Yeah, things could change. But right now, this is how it works. You can't make your plans around made up fake rules that could legally be enacted in theory if lawmakers decided to do so. That makes no sense. Right now, if you knew laws were coming, that's different. But just saying, but a lawmaker could do this. Well, sure, they could also decide that uh, everyone who currently has residency is being kicked out and uh, only people who didn't do it as a plan B will ever be allowed in. They could make it that the attempt to do a plan B, they could make it that having planted your flags in other countries is a crime. And if you ever re-enter any country where you did that, or even anywhere you didn't, that you could be arrested. For example, going to Iran after you have a passport stamp from Israel is illegal, right? You don't think about it because to Iran, the action of entering another country is a crime. To you, you, just, you did something that was legal at the time. You went to Israel on whatever passport you had. Israel let you in. But later you do something that makes something you did in the past a crime. Well, that's complicated, but countries can do that. So you, if you're going to go down this ridiculous path of, but they could do this, well, be completely fair. Which is more likely to completely screw themselves over and act in a way that a country has not previously, or to punish people who've been acting inappropriately, right? Because you're not supposed to be planting flags. Countries don't like that. They don't want you doing that. If you're going to be resident in their country, great. If you're not, then you're not. Not hey, come be semi-resident, pretend that this is your country, pretend you like it, pretend you care, pretend you're invested, and really, we're just a fallback if the place you actually like goes bad. While some countries will take your money on that, while some might, should the world fall apart, honor that, it's at their discretion to honor it. You don't know that they will honor it at the time. They've got your money, and they've got people who actually care about their country, that they actually care about, that are actually doing some good for people, why would they let you in? If they're in a position where they don't need you, well, all that stuff you did may not matter. That's where this gets really interesting, is when the world actually does fall apart. So let's talk about the situation where the world has fallen apart, or at least a lot of it, right? The United States and Canada, maybe Western Europe, all of Western society has gone through complete collapse. They're now at civil war. They're at war with each other. The currencies have collapsed. Everything has fallen apart. The world is coming apart at the seams. This could be because of an economic collapse. It could be because of elections in the United States going awry. It could be because of zombies. It doesn't matter. All these things are possible. None of them are likely, but what if it happened? This is when people really need that plan B. It's not their own fault. It's not their personal lives. It is the world around them. Well, trust me, 
If this was happening, you would be wishing you had done a plan A, not a plan B. You would be so sorry, and everybody's gonna be like, you know how much Scott warned you about this? Like, the degree to which Scott warned you. You understand, this is exactly what he's talking about. And you'd be like, there's no, no way to hide my shame now, but there you are. Okay, so, you're gonna go. You can say, well, luckily, right, I talked to my consultants, and I planted lots of flags. Good for you, all right, so now you're gonna head to Mexico. That's your first choice. Oh wait, Mexico decided not to honor your plan B, right? The world's falling apart. The last thing they're gonna do is worry about your residency. They don't care, they don't care at all. If you're already in the country, that's one thing, right? If you're actually resident, you're living there, chances that they'll kick you out, low. Chances that they're not going to let you in because you have not been living there, you've not proven that you're in, you know, dedicated to Mexico, that they now have a world falling apart, they gotta close their borders. They have millions, literally, it would be millions or hundreds of millions of Americans attempting to get into Mexico all at once. And they're all seeking asylum. And guess what? Asylum seekers get preference over you. You're rich. You don't get to seek asylum, not unless you have a real situation to prove, in which case your residency didn't matter. So whether you're getting into Mexico or not is not gonna be dependent on that residency paperwork. It's gonna be dependent on your refugee status and whether Mexico's taking anyone at all. Because if the US is falling apart, Mexico easily, almost instantly, is just gonna close the border. And if you have residency, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, sorry, we're not, we're not even considering that. We're not looking at paperwork, we're not letting people in through a filter, it's just closed. Try to enter and we shoot. Right, that's the assumption. Same thing would happen in the other direction. Basically, that's what happens already. Right, so the totally precedent, totally normal, totally expected. Same thing, you come into Nicaragua, you planted your plan B, and they go, well, you didn't show up, so that evaporated, you don't have residency. Good, good thing you planted that flag. Right, what do you got to show? Are they gonna let you in when all the borders have closed and North America's falling apart? Not very likely. They got their own people to take care of, people who actually live here, people who are actually resident, people who are actually citizens, right? Even those of us who are residents or nearly residents, right? We risk that we would get kicked out. Of course, that's a possibility, right? Same thing if I was in Mexico and the whole world fell apart and they're like, you can't claim asylum, sorry, you gotta go. We got people to take care of that we're responsible for. You're just here because it's nice, sorry, right? priorities. So in a case where the world is falling apart, you got to offer something. You got to bring something to the table and your planted flags don't count. If anything, they count against you, right? People who had so much money that they were willing to throw it away on something that did nothing for nobody, that they were just flaunting how much money they could throw away. That's not going to look good. If you want to look good, if you actually want to do something, that's going to make you a, a little bit closer to having planted flags, don't do anything that anyone considers planting a flag. One, and Ron from Nearshore Living recently recommended this. If you have the financial resources to be doing this silly stuff, get out there and travel, get to know the world. Don't be doing this stuff remotely through a consultant. Get out there and see what's going on. Learn about the world. Your education will go so much farther and keep you from being mid-led by stuff by this. Travelers, people who've actually gone out and lived, none of us have this plant a flag thing. Planting a flag is something they tell people who've never left their country or have only gone to like Cancun resorts because everyone else is like, um, what would that even mean? That's not how things work. But if you've, you know, grew up in the US, you never really go anywhere, who knows how the world works? The US isn't gonna teach you. And even if they did, it's really hard to like get that context of things when you don't really live there. So that's understandable, but it's not going to do what you think. So go out and travel, get that, get that world education. That alone is gonna make a really big difference so that you're better prepared for all the decisions that you're gonna to have to make. You're gonna know where to go, how to live, how to get in, who to talk to. You're just gonna have a lot more knowledge and that's just gonna pay off way more than having planted a flag, having plant, planted an idea so that you're prepared for stuff. Step two is save your money. Making yourself poor or poorer does nothing to help you. If you want to be in the best possible position, should anything bad happen to you personally or to the world, 
having financial resources is a positive. So that's something that you want to be as best prepared for as possible. And I'm not saying that money is everything. I'm not saying that you should base your whole life around money, but doing flag planting decreases your financial power and just putting that money in a, in a savings account or investing it somewhere is 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 conserving your financial power so just in that one action you can make things better for yourself in most circumstances simply by using that same money in a more logical way hold on to it so that when you do need to you know let's say it costs ten thousand dollars maybe it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars for your flag planting well that hundred thousand dollars might have bought you a house it might have bought you a business it may have bought you passage somewhere you need to go so unless you have just unlimited resources. And if you have unlimited resources, then none of this matters. You're gonna have a private plane, you're gonna fly where you need to go, and the world falling apart isn't gonna be something you're concerned about. It's the rest of us, those of us who have limited financial resources, whether you have $20,000 to your name or 20 million to your name, conserving this money is still in a range where you need to do that rather than just throwing it around, throwing it away for things that don't really get you uh, real results. And this is common in IT. There's a ton of things that we face in my professional life where people are convinced to spend all kinds of money on things that they can't see the results of. And it's okay to not see the results. Some things like a plan B, you wouldn't see the results. That alone doesn't make it bad. It just makes it in an area that is really easy to have scams. So you gotta be careful. But if you're looking at a lot of things in IT, people will say, oh, we're gonna do all this stuff for safety, we're gonna protect you. But if you actually logically look at the things that they're telling you to do, they're making it more dangerous. They're spending your money and actually increasing the risk of something terrible happening to your business. But it's all just complex enough and things that people don't wanna think about that they hope by just paying a service, by paying a salesman, that somehow their problems will be fixed. But this isn't something you can pay someone to fix for you. You need to come up with a plan that works for you and you need to do the things that best prepare you for it. Of course, the best thing ever is to just make your plan A be something that is safe and makes you happy. But if you can't, then having a plan B that actually works, almost certainly, nothing is proven, when things go wrong is going to be the best thing, right? Simply throwing money at things and not thinking about it is a guaranteed process for failure. And we see this all the time in IT. People will be like, well, but I paid for this, this special storage device. You're like, wow, that thing doesn't stand up to just baseline in the industry. You'd have done better had you done nothing. But because major disasters don't happen that often, whether it's in IT, like it's, you can go 10 years for an average business without any catastrophic problems. Well, if that's the case, you can sell them pretty much anything and they'll never know that they got screwed until you're long gone, possibly retired from the industry, it's, you're so long gone. Well, same thing with a plan B. I can sell you any crazy idea for a plan B and the chances that I'm gonna be around for you to be upset about when the world collapses, there's like no chance of that. And if I was, I'd say, um, dude, the world has collapsed. Anything I did for you is out the window. Everything everywhere is out the window. So the world is basically resetting. Did you really think that you could plan for the world resetting? That's not how it works. You are on your own, caveat emptor. So just saving your money or doing whatever you can to have greater financial power, those are things that will protect you. As Ron says, right, the rich are always okay. The poor are always in the line of fire. All these other things you're doing don't matter, but you can do things to lean towards being richer or being towards being poor and doing things like spending money on plan Bs, on planting your flags. Those are things that will make you poorer for no benefit in most cases. It's not that there's no way to ever do this and ever have benefit from it, but the chances that the benefits are really gonna be there, that you're actually going to uh, gain significantly from doing this is extremely low. There's almost no possibility that you're going to get the value that you've put into it and essentially no possibility of getting the value you expect out of it. I found a little back road that I've wanted to take for a long time and it was not completely flooded. So why not jump right into it? Oh, but I do got to show some of this water that's flowing along here. I had no idea that there was a stream here and there's a, a bit of water actually.
All right, and that brings us to number three, and this is really the big thing. If you're really concerned about planting flags, while you may be able to plant a few, the idea is generally presented as you can plant them all over and have this huge collection of flags that you've planted everywhere, and that is just nonsensical. But having a few is a possibility, but this requires some dedication. You have to move into a different way of thinking than I'm just going to hire a consultant and, uh, you know, have some paperwork from different places. If you really want to ingratiate yourself to a country, there's a few different things, and it depends on the country, but you need to, one, have something to offer, and two, generally, you want to be dedicated to that country. So, for example, if you were to buy a house there, if you were to invest in a business there, if you were to have employees there, if you were to be active in the community in that country in some way, for example, contributing to community projects or helping to build a community center or building schools or, you know, something like that. Like, there's lots of different things you could do to have a positive impact on a place that you're interested in and you don't have to live there necessarily. Those things would almost certainly count very heavily towards you. The idea here, and I think this is what people miss, is that when everything's going great and there's no problems, then existing laws and existing policies are, are really good representatives of what a country wants and how it's going to behave. But when the world is falling apart, then laws and policies either change or dissolve nearly instantly. So what stands as a really good example of what a country wants today, for example, Nicaragua makes it incredibly easy for someone to get residency and stay here indefinitely. And that is not expected to change. However, if the world was to fall apart, North America was to completely collapse, there would be guaranteed so many North Americans trying to come all right, real quickly, I want to say, I always tell people you never see a Jeep Wrangler in the country, and here's one driving past me. First one I've ever seen, other than my friends who came down with one and then had to leave because it was such a problem. Just And I'm, on, I'm in the middle of nowhere, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> this is such a remote road. I cannot believe how remote this is. It's also beautiful. What a great... Actually, I'm going to spin around and uh, let you guys see where I am here. All right, so this is a serious back road. On the north side of the Ponaloya Road, we did a really remote farm walk probably nearly a year ago. It was definitely in the last rainy season, so definitely more than eight months ago. And uh, that is the road directly next to this one. They actually merged when they hit the Ponaloya Road. This is the western road. That was the eastern. The eastern road apparently is completely desolate, but this western one, hola, buenas tardes, actually has some houses and some traffic. So, I mean, not very much traffic, but some horses, some bicycles, a Jeep Wrangler. It's all very surprising, but what a beautiful walk. And uh, it's about 4.30, so the sun is getting low, and it's not raining, has not been raining for hours, but uh, the sun is low and there's a lot of clouds. So we've got, it's a little bit on the dark side. Now this kid's, a lot of kids out playing today because the weather's not so warm. Everybody wants to be outside. Hola, buenas tardes. All right, let's get over here so you guys can see this beautiful, beautiful walk I'm on. I'm several miles from home. I do probably want to turn around at some point. This entire video has been filmed starting some ways from my home and uh, all going away from it. This is all going out into the middle of nowhere and the battery's getting low as well. Okay, so when you have the world falling apart, right, all the written rules, all the traditional rules, they're not going to hold up. They're not going to matter, right? They're going to be useless once that time comes. We have a centipede here. And this beautiful field. This is good content, me being distracted everywhere I go. <laughs> And uh, so all those rules, they fall apart. And then what matters is, is the unofficial stuff, right? Now, here in Nicaragua, where I am, right, the world is pretty unofficial already. We don't use a lot of 
really predictable processes. We don't use a lot of letter of the law kind of things. It tends to be a lot more, oh, are you a good person? Are you doing a good job? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you doing, are you trying to do the right thing? Right? It's a lot more gray area. It's a lot more discussion, as I say. United States and Canada tend to be a lot more hard and fast. Well, we wrote a rule and we're going to follow it. We're not, we're going to go by the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law, right? Nicaragua and a lot of Latin America, they go by the spirit of the law. Oh, we're trying. This law was written to try to do the right thing for our country. Well, we're going to interpret it that way. We're going to try to do the best thing for our country. U.S. and Canada, you would expect if the letter of the law said to do something terrible for the country, then you do something terrible for the country. It's a completely different world. It's in D and D terms, the United States and Canada are lawful and Latin America is chaotic. But in the same way, US and Canada lean a little bit more towards evil and Latin America leans a little bit more towards good. So that's how it works out, right? In the North, people tend to constrain themselves because the law makes them. And in Latin America, people tend to constrain themselves because they're all trying to act as a community together and they do so even though the law doesn't necessarily make them do so. So that's kind of a different way of looking at it. But that, that things are not so strict here is kind of natural if the world is falling apart. Because when the world falls apart, people are going to be worried about there being enough food. They're going to worry about if there's enough shelter. They're going to worry about letting in people who maybe are infected or can't afford to live and being a drain on society and affecting their families and such. Look at this beautiful lawn that they have here. Like that's so well maintained in such an out of the way location. I did know that there is like a campground or something down on this road, but I was unaware that there was anything else on it other than fields. Fields I knew. What an interesting spot. This is like so wild. And then they've like cleared this nearly American style lawn. I say nearly, really pushing the point there. Around this house just in the middle of nowhere. What a unexpected find. Living on roads like this is always interesting, right? Who chooses to be on a road like this? Is it, is it someone working the fields? Is it someone looking to kind of hide and disappear? But you're not too far from things getting out to the beach. If you have a car from here, super, super easy. So it's all perspective, right? You can even get out to like Chichi Galpa pretty easily from here. So, and a little path going into the fields. Obviously, the fields have paths. People are working these fields. These are real fields. And you can see we got a big fence we're coming up on. So we're coming up on something way bigger than what we've been seeing. Anyway, so once people are worried about basic survival and they're trying to protect their country, not from militaries, not from, not from banking, but they're trying to protect their country from simply overpopulation, from people taking up the food resources, people taking up the housing resources, then all those decisions are going to be they have to be, right? Are you a person who is going to not just in the next few days, but going forward, contribute to society in a positive way? Are you here because you love our culture? Are you bringing something to it that is going to be positive, right? That could be financial resources. It could be technical know-how. It could be the ability to grow, you know, permaculture and keep food going when, when there's a risk of starvation. Who knows, right? Manual labor, you're gonna be here to help move rocks out of the way so that we can keep roads moving because all of our equipment has stopped working because we can't get oil anymore, whatever. There's who knows how many problems are going to happen when, when we're talking about international collapse, right? It's unprecedented if it was to happen. And so all of those formalities, all of those pieces of paper aren't going to protect anybody. It is going to be, it is going to be every man for themselves and you're going to have to prove why you're valuable enough to be allowed in anywhere sometimes even where you come from. This is really interesting. This is like a compound. I need to get farther back so you can really see it. But like, that is so like over the top for the fence and then a small house, but all very manicured and everything. And then there's houses back there. Wow. I knew when I was on the other road a long time ago, I could hear things happening down here. Oh, I see people out there too. And uh, I was like, why do I hear people? Who would be out here? But this road, which looks like the lesser of the two roads, has so much more than the other road, than the one just to our right. 
Oh, and I found it. This is the place. Los Alpes. The Alps. We're not in the mountains. It's a weird name. <laughs> Beautiful fields. Look at this. That is a gorgeous pasture right there. Very old world, dark and moody. And then this is, see the Rancho Los Alpes? You can rent places out here. This is the only thing that's advertised on this road. So I have no idea what exists past this other than fields. I need to know anything existed on this at all. So who knows? Uh, we're only gonna go so far. My battery's gonna die. I gotta get home before it gets dark. But uh, this has been an interesting walk. So those are the things I wanted to talk about. Those are the ideas about planting your flag. Definitely get down in the comments and let me know why are you being sold planting your flag? When I ask people, they, I hear things like, well, I've been told I have to plant flags. But when you actually ask, like, what does that, what do you think that's actually going to do for you in the real world? What do you think, how do you think that will actually benefit you? People are always unclear because they're being sold it through a sales process, right? Salesmen are like, this is the thing you need to do. And it sounds so reasonable that many, many, many people aren't questioning it. Oh, it was beautiful. Like butterflies on these orange flowers with these gorgeous bowls right behind. Hey guys. They're very lonely out here. Where's your herd? Donde esta tus atos? Oh, I got a big field over here. A lot of water in the road. I don't know if you guys can see it. Everywhere I'm walking, I'm dodging the, the running water. That's how I know it's about time to turn around. So we're going to kind of call it here and go over some beautiful views of this field. Because that is just... I love my wide open spaces. All right. I hope that that all makes sense. I hope that... You're able to see why we're concerned about the planting your flag idea, why plan B's are fundamentally dangerous. Not completely a bad idea, but you should be planning for a plan B, not spending money on a plan B. And you really need to think about your plan A. Go see my video about plan A's, about why you need to make your real life as good as possible so you don't have these worries. So you don't need to do this planting your flag. You don't need like, I understand, like I want to have an apartment in Guatemala, but not because I'm afraid of Nicaragua falling apart, but because I want to spend weekends sometimes in Guatemala and I want to go to my own place. I want to have a place to, you know, store my clothes because that's where I would keep my, my cold weather other clothes. I want a place that I can decorate for me. I want a place that I know is going to be available. I don't have to, you know, go to an Airbnb and hope they haven't rented it or stopped renting it. There was a place on Airbnb that I loved using in Guatemala and it's gone from Airbnb, right? I don't want that to happen. I want to have a place that I know I can keep taking my kids back to and take my dogs to and have their stuff and just comfortably go, right? That's planting. I would have a flag planted in Guatemala if I did that and I plan to, right? And that'll make it that should I ever have some need to move to another country, it'll be like, I don't even have to move. I just have to switch which house I'm in, right? I'm not doing it for that purpose. That would be silly, but I'm doing it with a purpose. And that purpose gives me that power. And a lot of people, tons, Canadians, Americans, especially, but from all over the world, go to all over the world. But here in Nicaragua, we see them all the time. They come down, they buy homes, some of them invest, they become parts of the community, maybe not super integrated, maybe not super involved, but people know them. They have a history. They're a part of the community. They're, you know, long-termers, buenas. And they're going to be in a much better position because they've planted a flag. They've put in money. They've put in time. They've shown that maybe they can't find the work they need down here, or they can't afford the lifestyle that they want to have if they only work from down here, or maybe they are not in a position to retire yet. So they're still going back and forth, or maybe they have family they have to go take care of. Everybody has their own things, right? But by being here, by buying a house, renting an apartment, doesn't matter by investing in a business or just getting involved with whatever in your society, right? Attending the local po poker game, going and eating dinner at the local restaurants, just a pig just ran across the road and uh, uh, whatever it is, right? You're going to become a part of society. You're going to, and you're going to start to know people, right? People who just plant flags, they have no knowledge of how things work, who to talk to, and that's a major deficit as well. You start having this problem of, um, okay, so so you, okay, you've got residency in this country. Who can uh, who can vouch for you? Uh, oh, uh, do you have 
you know, connections with a, a lawyer, an accountant, uh, immigration services, the police, anybody who could, you know, you know, in the real world, sometimes knowing people is important. And if you're just going to plant a flag and you're not actually going to go live somewhere, have you really planted a flag? It's, you're lacking the resources that would be expected of someone who had done that. All right, I'm going to spin this around so you can see the pig disappeared, but it ran down this trail. And it came from this field over here. It was very funny. It was a big pig too. Like just, it just oinked and ran across the road. Very funny. But those are things that you'd be expected to have. So in the rest of us, when, and this is partially why the sales pitch of, of planting a flag is so powerful, right? Why it works so well is because people like me, right, come and actually move to a place. And then when other people reference me, they say, well, look, Scott did this. He's protected. If things go, go south, haha, <laughs> pun intended, in the United States, in Canada, well, he's going to be fine. And like, oh, Scott planted a flag. I should plant a flag too. But then they can just say, well, if that worked, imagine how much better it would work doing two or three or 10 or 20. All right. And then people start being like, hola otra vez. <laughs> and, uh, and so it becomes a really easy sales pitch. And they're leaving out that I actually moved. They leave out that I actually got a house of my own. They leave out that I've invested in a business, that I have employees, that I'm involved in the community, that I take an interest, that I know lots of people, that I have lawyers, plural, that I have accountants, plural, that I have, you know, I have an interest and I'm involved and, and people see me places like I, I'm over the top, right? People see me everywhere. But you don't have to go that far. But as an example, I tend to be someone that someone would point to, I'm just saying I fall into that category, and use me as an example that planting flags would be a powerful tool. And if you're planting flag, a flag or two, like me, or you're actually moving, actually making that your place, not throwing away, I didn't give up my residency, my, yeah, I didn't give up my residency or my citizenship in the United States. I'm a Texas resident with United States citizenship. I have complete legal right to go back to the United States at any time. It's not in my plans. It's not my plan A. It's not my plan B. But if I had to, I still have that, right? So technically I have a flag planted, but mine's in the United States. My plan A is here. So that's where it's different. And you have to look at that big picture and really say, are the things I'm being presented with making sense? Will they actually do the things that people are pretending that they will do? And what is it that I really want? What would be a successful story for me? Would I be happy moving to that place? Is that where I want to be? If I'm so scared of where I am that I feel I need to do this, why are you still in that place? I know some people have limitations and you just, you can't get away from it. Boy, the light really just keeps changing as I walk. Maybe you have family there you have to take care of. Maybe you have a type of work there's just no way to do somewhere else. Maybe you have some obligations you just can't get away from. But stop and ask yourself, if you're in a position where you're that worried that you would take these actions, you would consider these actions, ask yourself, isn't the best action very likely figuring out how to either make the total move and, and change your plan A and not have to plant flags, but actually go fully actually reside somewhere, or at least go partway and begin taking a real commitment on another place. And yes, over time, you may find, like me, that having a second place, like in Guatemala, could be just a part of your vision of what your happy is. Great. If that's how you end up with a planted flag, then you're going to be golden. But if you're just going there for the purpose of planting flags, chances are they are going to burn you and you're going to get nothing, but you're going to spend a lot. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, down in those comments, uh, ask your questions, leave your comments, say hello, talk amongst yourselves. And there are directions in the uh, uh, description where you can make a video and send it in to me. That would be fantastic. I love putting you guys on the show. That would be amazing, especially if you're hanging out this late in the show. Thank you so much. And uh, as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to pop up four videos on the screen. Just go ahead and click on one of those. Uh, that would be great. That helps tell the algorithm that this show makes you want to watch more YouTube. And that's what they care about. So go ahead and do that. See you guys later.